Another method using the idea of indirect write, or as we called it, deferred update, is shadow storage. Here the idea is you keep two versions for each modified block only. So not for each and every block, as in twin block storage. Here you only copy, you only double the storage requirements for the modified blocks. Again, as in twin block, there's an old consistent version and there's a new possibly inconsistent version. As in twin block, we have an atomic switch to indicate the currently consistent version. But in addition, we also need two mapping tables. So let's look at an example. Assume we have a modifying transaction T1. We have a file, but here in this file, we don't have A and B versions. We just have blocks numbered from zero to nine in this example. But what we also have is a mapping table. This mapping table maps block numbers, logical block numbers to physical block numbers. That is one mapping that's going on, of course, the file internally, even though this is a mapping, mapping here from logical numbers to physical numbers at this level, there might be other mappings going on, be it on the operating system, be it in the hard disk drive or the SSD, there might be other mappings involved. So let's look at the method. We have a map here, mapping those logical numbers to physical numbers. Logical block IDs are mapped to physical block IDs. And we also have this global pointer pointing to the currently consistent version. And what this means here is we have one map. This is called map A. That is currently representing the consistent version. If you want to change anything, now we can read any of the blocks, any of the blocks pointed to by that map and change it. And that's what this transaction is doing. Here we are changing block number five actually that's what's going on because logically three is mapped to physical block number five so if you want to modify that we read block number five into main memory but then we have to change the arrow pointing from three to that physical block so we must not point to physical block five anymore we now point to a different physical block that's not pointed to yet. So in this example, it's block number six, physical block number six, but it could also be another block that's currently not pointed to. So we could have used block number one, eight and nine, for example. So what you see here is in order to come up with a, with a new version, the B version we are currently working on, we're creating another table. This table or map is called B, that's the B version, and that's possibly inconsistent. It is currently inconsistent with respect to transactional guarantees, as I assume that the transaction didn't commit yet. So the only change you see here is this pointer. Map B has the same entries as map A. The only difference is this pointer. So here, the logical block number three is pointing to physical block number six. In the old map, in the consistent map, map A, Logical block number three is still pointing to physical block number five. So if anything goes wrong, we can go back to this map and everything is fine. We will be able to retrieve the consistent version. Of course, this only makes sense if the contents of the map are also persisted on a persistent storage medium, be it hard disks or SSDs, whatever you want. But main memory alone is not enough. So this method works similar to twin block. If another block is modified, let's assume we also want to write something on block number three, then we have to write the changed version to a different place. We can't just overwrite this block number three because this is pointed to by the consistent version. In this situation, we look for a free block, a free physical block and write the modified contents of block number three that were changed to that position. So here what, what the arrows again mean is the old version of logical block number one were on physical block number three. So now the new version of logical block number one can be found at physical block number one, which is just a coincidence that it is the same number here. So similar to the twin block, block method, so assume there's a crash. Well, all you have to do is you discard the contents of this mapping table. That's all you do, and you never change this pointer. You don't even have to override the blocks here. 
there's no need for that because you don't have to have these two sets in the same state as in twin lock. Here, simply, whenever in the next round, whenever the next transaction comes in, wants to modify something, you simply override the block and that's all you need. But there's no need at this point in time to copy data around on this level. The only thing you need to do is you discard the changes and initialize this mapping table again with the contents of the old consistent mapping table. That's all you have to do. And then you can start operating on incoming transactions again. The other case, the other option is to persist the changes. So what do you do in this? Well, you first want to make sure that the changed contents of those blocks actually make their way to disk. So you flush the contents of those changed blocks B1 and B6 to disk. That's the first thing. Write modified blocks. Now the second thing is you write this mapping table out to disk. Write MB to disk. The third is you perform the atomic switch. So only then you ch change this global pointer to B. So perform global switch. Okay, that's what I already that's what is already displayed here. So we set that to B. And then you should also override MA with the contents of MB. As MB is now reflecting the consistent version, you first copy the contents of MB over MA. And then when new transactions come in, you can simply operate on MA again. So MA is going to be changed for every change block. You change a pointer here, but you don't change MB. M and B is in read-only mode. So what are the advantages of this method? One is it doubles the storage only for the changed blocks, which is a huge improvement over twin block. The undo of changes is as easy as in twin block. So one disadvantage, however, is that the helper data structures, with helper data structures, I mean those maps, MA and MB, may become pretty big, bigger than the block. Yeah, so there is some concern about whether that is so severe can be questioned. However, what's more severe here is a high degree of fragmentation. So what do I mean by fragmentation? I already explained it in my video on twin block, but let's look at the concrete example we've seen already here in the context of shadow storage. Let's go back. So here we are seeing it for every new version of a block we're writing, we're putting it to a different place. That means we are destroying the order of the blocks, the correspondence of the logical order of the blocks with the physical order of the blocks in the file. That is exactly what fragmentation is about. So we have two different domains, two different key concepts here where we map the logical blocks to the physical blocks. And as we keep on changing blocks in this method, more and more arrows will go crisscross. And that's basically the fragmentation we're observing in this method. So that's the drawback of shadow storage, which may have an impact. So you might think this is really an obscure method. You shouldn't use that. It's really out of date. Who would care about that? But interestingly, this is still in use in many, many different situations. So one is virtual memory. Virtual memory, virtual memory is exactly doing that. It's mapping virtual memory addresses to physical addresses, and that's done by shadow storage. I will do a separate video on that. In addition, some file systems use this method. ZFS is one of them. So this idea of doubling the storage only for the changed blocks actually has a separate name. And again, this is something we find in many places in data management and operating systems. It's also called copy on write. And we will revisit that several times throughout this lecture. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look at my website datenbankenlernen.com. 
it has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jens Did, or you look at our website, infosys.uni-silent.de. See you then.